you might ask the question, where is the universe? Ever thought of that one? Where is it? Well, you can't say where because all, everywhere has to be in relation to something. There would have to be another universe to say where this one is. But then since those two together would constitute the universe, uh, we wouldn't still be able to say where it was. It isn't anywhere. And so in that sense, the center isn't anywhere in space locally. And furthermore, the kind of space we are dealing with is only one possible kind of space. It's the kind of space our physical organisms are attuned to. We are, you see, like the radio. We pick up what wavelength we're on. So then, when inquirers used to come to that great modern Hindu saint, Sri Ramana Maharshi, and they'd ask him all sorts of silly questions, like, who was I in my last incarnation? What will I be in my next one? He would always reply, who is asking the question? Who are you? Find out, because that's the thing you need to know. As it were, dig down into the depths of your being and say, what is this that I call I? That's one of the very fascinating questions. It's also, it teases us out of thought to think about death in the sense of going to sleep and never waking up. Imagine that. And you find you can't. And yet, it's, it's, a, it's a thought that although you can't get to grips with it, it remains fascinating. Also the question, how is it suddenly that you awakened into this world? Where were you before? In Zen Buddhism, they have the meditation problem, the koan. Before your father and mother conceived you, what is your original nature? And that's the same sort of weird question as what it would be like to go to sleep and never wake up. What was it like to wake up having not previously gone to sleep? very mysterious. But as you go on and plumb this question, you begin to develop the feeling that your existence is exceedingly odd. In many ways odd. Odd because it is here and it so easily might not have been. After all, if your father hadn't met your mother, would you be here? Now, of course, somebody would be here because he might have met somebody else. Would that be you? Of course it would. Don't you see? You can only be you by being someone. But every someone is you. Every someone is I. That's your name, you say. Uh, it's me. I am here. And everybody feels that I in the same way. It's the same feeling. Just like blue everywhere is the same color. So I-ness being, as it were, the most fundamental thing in man, is also fundamental to the universe. It too is I. And our I is a special case of it. Coming out from the, in quotes, central I, like so many tits from the belly of a sow, or so many spines from a sea urchin, so many legs from a spider. And that is, of course, why the images of the Hindu gods are shown with many arms or many faces because it is saying that all arms are the arms of the divinity. All faces are its masks. So you see, there's really nothing to worry about because the, the, the important you 
is perfectly indestructible. It's what there is. Our comings and goings, our fortunes and misfortunes are a sort of mirage. The more we know about them, the more we know about the world, the more diaphanous it seems. And therefore, everything in the world has the characteristics of smoke. You know, when you blow a cigarette or pipe or something and a cloud of smoke and you see it in the sunbeam and it's full of walls and designs and all kinds of marvelous things going on and then slowly it disappears. Well, everything's just like that. 